didn't think that you guys would notice, but during my one year here on YouTube, I've kind of made a reputation for myself of being that girl who reuses clothes all the time. You guys have picked up on this, which very smart Good for you. This is an issue that you guys have been DMing me on Instagram and TikTok, commenting on my YouTube, asking me to speak about, and it's how to outfit repeat in a stylish, suave way, and also how to shop properly so that you can build a wardrobe where you don't constantly feel tempted to inundate yourself with new clothes because you're so satisfied with all the pieces that you're maximizing and reusing. I'm gonna think of a better title, I promise. Tip number one, take a moment or multiple moments because it's gonna take a little bit of time to decide on a color scheme for your wardrobe and stick to that color scheme. Why? Why should I do this? There's multiple reasons. First, once you decide on a color scheme, when you're shopping and you find a top that you really like but they don't offer it in your color, can't buy, sorry. And your wallet will thank you and you will save so much money. Second is with a color scheme, it is so much easier to match and mix and coordinate multi-dimensional outfits from one piece because everything in your closet matches each other. Perk number three is if you choose a color scheme that is most flattering to your skin tone and your body, you love how you look in those clothes so much that it is psychologically easier for you to repeat outfits because you just really, really freaking like how you look. And you're probably thinking now like, Katie, yeah, cool, but that's such a grandiose concept. How the frick do I make my whole closet into a mood board? Well, this is how I did it. Personally, I decided that my color scheme is black, white, warm tones of beige, blue, and green. Now, how did I come to those colors, you may ask? So first, it is a little bit of trial and error, but a way to expedite this process is I thought back to all the instances where people would say, oh, blank is your color. Oh, I love this top on you. And I tallied up which colors was I wearing when people complimented me the most. Come to think of it, people would always say, I love blue on you. Light blue looks so good on you. Blue really makes your skin pop. I don't freaking know. And sure enough, whenever I take pictures in things that are blue, I love how I look. And on that note, let's provide an example of where I did the opposite and I bought something that was against my color scheme and I regret it. And it's this purple cardigan. It's a royal purple. It's freaking gorgeous. I love the silhouette but it is actually one of my purchases that I kind of regret because I can only pair it with one tank top in my entire closet because it doesn't match with anything else. The utility of that piece of clothing, the return that I'm getting on that investment, it's just not high enough. That's an example of, yeah, I went out of my comfort zone, I bought a piece just to have that piece in that color and it didn't really contribute anything. My second tip is really prioritize and invest in the right sweater vests, button ups, blazers, outerwear coats, and bags. These are the holy five. What is, what is an acronym? Fabulous five. Furious five. Fashionable five. I like to call these pieces links because they link together all the different elements of your outfit. You can always throw on a bag to tie in with a belt. You can always put on a blazer to add an extra level of dimensionality. So you have to make sure you really like these and that they match with a majority of the pieces in your closet. One example of this for me is the beloved hounds to the vest that you guys have seen like 30 times on my channel. There is no limit to what she can spice up. I can throw over a turtleneck, short sleeves, button downs, puff sleeves, dresses, blouses, hoodies, seven already, and these are just categories. If you can add this vest over, you're immediately doubling the amount of outfit combinations that you can make, right? So I'm talking about those pieces. Tip number three is gonna sound really basic, but I promise you, I have my own spice that will make it a little less basic. Just kidding, nothing in this world is original and I am only a cog in the machine. Anyways, don't follow the freaking trends. And I don't even mean what you see on Instagram. I mean what you see in your community. For example, I live in Arizona. It is freaking hot in Arizona. We want to die every time we step out of our cars. So as a result, most people here wear super short shorts, sports bras, a tank top. It's a lot of athleisure. I found myself fitting into this culture because I wanted to survive. I didn't want to die of heat stroke, but I found myself very insecure. The reason for that is because I don't like tank tops. I don't think they're very flattering on me. My shoulders are a slight insecurity of mine. And so I realized that the dress code of this state doesn't really align with my body and my preferences. 
So I went against the grain. I think the reason why a lot of us feel this impulse to constantly buy new clothes or shop for occasions is because we don't really feel like ourselves in any of the clothes we buy. So every new occasion or new month or whatever is an opportunity to try to find that, right? But you gotta find a strategy or else you're gonna constantly be on that hamster wheel of consuming and buying and never being truly happy with how you look in the clothes. I have a solution to this. You have to shop for your body type and decide which silhouettes are most flattering on you based on the parts of your body that you wanna showcase and the parts of the body that you wanna to tone down or mask or hide. You gotta be honest with yourself. When I was pivoting away from athleisure, I took a moment to be honest with myself. I don't love showcasing my shoulders. I don't like showcasing my hips. So I stay away from silhouettes like bodycon. I stay away from tank top dresses, strapless. Those are instantly categories that I no longer even look at when I shop. You see how it cuts down time? With all that soul searching, I narrowed down my closet to three silhouettes. Puff sleeves, wow. because they cover my shoulders while still making a statement piece. V-necks with flowy tops, because I love showing off my decolletage area. And then finally baggy, because I just feel freaking swaggy and baggy and swaggy and baggy. <laughs> Bars. You gotta be meticulous. It takes a little bit of analyzing, mapping, but this is how we stop the hamster wheel, guys. I forgot what tip we're on. Bruh. I cannot count for the life of me. It's a flaw. It's a true flaw that I need to fix. Tip number something. Editing Katie will put it in. <laughs> when you feel like a certain outfit is bland and you don't want to wear it again, use different accessories. Right now, I'm wearing a ton of pearls with this outfit to coordinate with the polka dots. But if I switch these to gold bowl jewelry, wore multiple hoops on both ears, stacked up on the gold bracelets, it would give more of a baddie vibe, right? And instantly, it's just repurposed another outfit without changing any elements of the actual fit. <laughs> so accessorize, that's a quick additional tip. And the next tip, is whenever you wanna buy something, put it on your wish list and sit on it. And there's a different rubric for statement pieces and normal pieces. For statement pieces, I sit on those for three months. And I do not buy it until three months have passed and I still really want it. Statement pieces are freaking like, you know that you can only wear this a few times a year because it is so vibrant, only goes with a few pieces. Everybody will remember it because it's crazy, but that's the beauty of it, right? For normal pieces, like a cute dress or a nice pair of jeans, I'd say one month. I've heard of people that make their wishlist pieces, their wallpaper on their phones, and after staring at it every day, it really makes you question whether you really want it. My next tip kind of piggybacks and also slightly conflicts with the previous tip, but you'll get what I'm saying. When you find a piece that you are obsessed with that fits you like a glove, consider buying it in a second color that also fits into your color palette. When you're obsessed with the piece, you already have so many different outfit combinations. If you copy and paste that to a new carbon copy in a different color, you've just duplicated your outfit combinations. I do this with my jeans. I hate shopping for jeans. In my 21 years of living, I've only found one pair of jeans that I will swear by. I first started out with a green pair and I was like, these are the one. So I waited a month, then I bought the white one, waited another month and then I bought it in blue. Those are the only jeans I wear and I will be wearing them until they literally rip at the seams. And that brings me to my final tip. And this might sound stupid, you might cringe, but I promise you it works. Put on music and have a dance party when you're putting together an outfit. Alexa is my best friend. I have her play my twerking to this in my room 24 seven playlist and I have her blast those. I think a lot of us make the mistake of putting together outfits the night before with like freaking glasses and pimple pin on and just not looking your best. So then obviously every outfit doesn't look good because you don't feel good. Whenever you're doing a styling session, make it a party, make it fun, and it'll get your creative juices flowing way faster. Those are all my tips that I have for you today. So I think we're starting to see a trend here of as long as clothes will guarantee you a good return on investment, AKA you can wear it with so many outfits, then it's okay to buy. If they don't, you should stay away from them. And let me know if there are any other fashion dilemmas that you'd like me to help consult you on because this was kind of fun. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so much. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next week. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Oh, no. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> hey you, it's... Where's my pen? Where's my pen? <sighs> hey you, it's Katie you.
Okay, okay. I think it's good enough.